Today we're going to be talking about the addition and subtraction of algebraic fractions. But we've, before we talk about algebraic fractions, let's talk about adding and subtracting fractions in general. So I'm going to go ahead and start out with something like 2 thirds plus 1 fourth. Now remember, in order to add and subtract fractions, you have to have a common denominator. It has to happen. You cannot do it without it. Let's take a look at 2 thirds and 1 fourth. I'm going to focus on the denominator, 4 and 3, here we go, so I know that my lowest common denominator between the two is 12. So let's go ahead and go over here now. Now I'm going to be comparing twelfths. I'm able to compare because I have similar size. So in order to get from 3 to 12, I multiply by 4, so I'm taking 2 times 4, 8 twelfths, and then 4 times 3, 1 times 3, so now I can go ahead and combine my fractions because I have a common denominator. 8 twelfths plus 3 twelfths gets me 11 twelfths. So you see my denominators stay the same. And if we were to pick a different sort of problem, let's make this a subtraction problem. So we'll go with 2 thirds minus 1 fourth. And same thing, I need a common denominator, which we already established was 12. Oops, we are subtracting, not adding. Then I end up with 8 twelfths minus 3 twelfths. And I know if I remove 3 of the twelfths from the 8 that I have, I'm left with 5 twelfths. Algebraic fractions operate in the same way. Um, you're always looking for a common denominator. Always, always, always. So something that you may have, may have done before is worked with uh, simple algebraic fractions like x minus 3 over 4 and x plus 1 over 5. Let's just take a look at this example. In this case, we have 4 and 5. Our common denominator is going to be 20. Now, in order to get from 4 to 20, I had to multiply by 5, which means I'm going to have to take my numerator and multiply that by 5. Multiply everything, so I'm going to get 5x minus 15. And then for this denominator, in order to get from 5 to 20, I have to multiply it by 4. So I'm multiplying 4x, 4, 1, so that I get 4x plus 4. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and combine everything over 20ths, and I have 5x plus 4x, which is 9x, and negative 15 plus 4, which is negative 11. So my answer is 9x minus 11 over 20. But what we are doing now is taking it a step further. We are now dealing with algebraic fractions where we have uh, variables in the denominator as well, but the rules are still the same. My common denominator between 9p squared and p to the third is 9p to the third. So I can see that 9p squared goes into 9p to the third if I multiply it by p. So I'm going to multiply this numerator by p so that I get 5p over 9p to the third. And then I'm looking at my second fraction, 1 over p to the third. Well, p to the third, if I take p to the third and multiply it by 9, I get 9p to the third. So I'm going to take my numerator and multiply it by 9. Now I can go ahead and add those values together. So that I have, since I have a common denominator, I can go ahead and just add my numerators together to get 5p plus 9 over 9p to the third. Now as I'm looking at my answer, I'm super tempted to cancel out this 9 from that 9, but I cannot. This 5p plus 9 is a combined term. There's nothing I can do with it because there's nothing that goes into both 5p and 9 that will also go into 9p to the third. There isn't anything. So I'm just going to leave that as my answer. And if you want to try the next one on your own, you can go ahead. But if not, you can just watch along and see how I do it. So I'm looking at my common denominator, and I see that it's going to be n times n times t. Because here in my first fraction, I have m times n, 
In my second fraction, I have n times t, so n m times n times t would take care of my fraction. So let's go ahead and change them to m and t's. Now I'm going to go ahead and multiply. In this case, I had to multiply m n times t in order to get m and t. So whatever you do to the numerator, or to the denominator, you have to do to the numerator. So I have 6t, and then I had to multiply my second fraction by m so that I have 7m. So then my answer, my simplified fraction here is going to be 6t minus 7m over m and t. So that's all we have for now. Um, what I'm going to do, what we're going to do now is take a look at some of these problems and then next time we're going to talk about adding and subtracting fractions that are a little more complicated. Now the problems uh, are going to get a little trickier so we're going to talk about other strategies as well in terms of adding and subtracting algebraic fractions. Now usually if you have a fraction in the format something like two-thirds plus one-fourth, you'll notice that three and four don't have a common denominator um, other than multiplying the numbers by themselves to get three times four, which is twelve. We're going to follow that same concept here with adding and subtracting algebraic fractions. So in this case, I have four over x plus two plus five over seven x minus three. My common denominator is actually going to be x times two times 7x minus 3. So that means that each of these fractions will have to be changed to fit the common denominator. In this first instance, I have 4 over x plus 2. Well, to make a common denominator, I need to multiply that by 7x minus 3, which means I also need to multiply the numerator by 7x minus 3. Then I also have this denominator of 7x minus 3, in order to make it a common denominator of x plus 2 times 7x minus 3, I need to multiply this by x plus 2, which means I need to multiply my numerator as well by x plus 2. So now what we're going to do is move this over here for a moment. And we're going to go ahead and take a look and work this out. So for my first fraction, I have, using the distributive property, I have 4 times 7x which is 28x and 4 times negative 3 which is a negative 12 over my common denominator of 7x minus 3 times x plus 2 plus now using the distributive property over here with the 5 5 times x is 5x 5 times 2 is 10 plus 5x plus 10 over a common denominator of 7x minus 3 times x plus 2. Now I can go ahead and add everything together under that common denominator of 7x minus 3 times x plus 2. And that's going to get me 28x plus 5x, which is 33x, a negative 12 plus 10 is 33x minus 2. And that's my answer. Now I've moved this over um, just so that we have more space to work with this next problem. This one's going to be a little tricky because we have x squared minus 25 which as we all know is a difference of squares. So I can rewrite that as 1 times x plus 5 or 1 over sorry x plus 5 times x minus 5. And then if I try to add it with my next fraction I have 5 minus x. Now x minus 5 and 5 minus x are not the same thing. You can see here this x is negative, this x is positive, this 5 is negative, and this 5 is positive. So they're completely the opposite of each other. But what I can do is go ahead and factor out a negative from the 5 minus x. Because what's going to happen is it, it's going to accomplish two things. One, it's going to make my denominator change from 5 minus x to 2 over x minus 5. 
So now that we can, we can see that I factored out a negative from a positive 5, which leaves me with a negative 5, and a negative from a negative x makes it a positive x. But also what happens is it changes this problem to a subtraction problem. So those are the two separate things that happened. Now when I look at a common denominator, I see that they both have x minus 5 in common. Both are common terms, which means then my common denominator is just going to be x plus 5 times x minus 5. So that means I don't have to do anything to my first fraction since that's already in the lowest common denominator. But with my second fraction, I'm going to have to multiply this by x plus 5, which means I multiply my numerator by x plus 5. So then as we go ahead and work this out now, using the distributive property, for my first fraction, it doesn't change. I still have x plus 5 times x minus 5. My second, my second fraction is going to be minus 2x plus 10 over x plus 5 times x minus 5. So here's the tricky part to remember. I'm subtracting this entire fraction, which means I'm not only subtracting the 2x, but I'm also subtracting the 10 as well. So when we go to combine our like terms, I have 1 minus 10. So that's going to be a negative 9. So I have negative 9 minus 2x. Or if you want to reorder it to say negative 2x minus 9, you could say that over x plus 5 times x minus 5. So something to think about, a lot of different steps are going to be happening in, this, in these types of problems. What you need to do is remember all the different steps. First, check for common denominators. Second, see if you have positive or negative values that can be rearranged. If not, then you can go on to that third step where you find the common denominator and then multiply your numerator and your denominator by that missing element in order to make it a common denominator as your answer. A lot of stuff, but you'll be fine if you remember the steps. Let's go ahead and take a look at the challenge problem. You can go ahead and do this one on your own, and we can talk about it in class some other time. All right, thanks.